Hey everyone, this is Z. In this video, I want to talk about the Black Ops 3 plot. So there's been a decent amount of discussion in blog posts, in YouTube videos, and other places around the internet about the plot, but a lot of what I've read and what I've seen doesn't really follow the clues presented in the game. So I want to give you guys my interpretation of the plot backed up by clips from the game and screenshots from the scrolling mission text that appears at the beginning of each level. So to begin, I'm going to give you the short version, and then you can decide whether or not you want to stick around for the full explanation afterward. So here goes the short version. After your character gets his or her limbs ripped off, you are rescued by Taylor and prepped for surgery to get artificial limbs and your DNI. While you're in an unconscious state in surgery, Taylor interfaces with your DNI to help with your transition. In the middle of this process, complications occur due to your injuries and you die. Everything from the Singapore mission onwards is actually your dying dream. Because you and Taylor were connected via your DNIs, his memories leak into your own when your DNI unexpectedly crashes. All of the missions that take place from Singapore onwards are actually missions from Taylor's memories. They don't happen exactly as he remembers them because your character's brain is reinterpreting them, but they are definitely his memories. The only uh, difference here is the last mission of the game, which is completely in your own head and doesn't come from Taylor's memories. However, your character does die when the end credits roll. Everyone else, Taylor, Hendrix, Diaz, Hall, Moretti, and Kane, are actually still alive. Okay, so are you intrigued? If so, stick around for the full details. I also encourage you to leave a like, comment on your thoughts, and do all the YouTube things that you normally do with the video. Also, check out the video description for a link to the wiki and a Reddit thread that both throw out a lot of the same theories that I do. Definitely good information uh, You know, if you want to read a, a little bit more about this subject. Alright, so let's begin. There are two ways you could have come up with the conclusion that I did. The more difficult but exciting way is to analyze the in-game clues. The easier but less fun way is to screenshot the scrolling text that appear at the beginning of each mission. I'm going to incorporate both into this explanation. You can also check out the video description for a link to the full set of screenshots that I took. So I'm going to split up my explanation of the plot into three stages that correspond with the physical state that your character is in. The first stage I'm calling full consciousness. So this begins with the initial mission in the game. The beginning part of the game isn't too special, right? You're a newbie and it's your job to rescue some hostages and take out some bad guys. Nothing out of the ordinary yet although you probably found it weird that your character doesn't have a name and is just referred to as the player if you turn on the subtitles. Unlike the first two Black Ops game, you know, your actual player character isn't uh, named, doesn't have a backstory. This will be you know, something to keep in mind later on. So the first interesting bit occurs when you rescue Lieutenant Khalil. The game really hammers Khalil's name to you, which should be a red flag that he is somehow important. Judging from Hendrick's dialogue, it's clear that he and Taylor know Khalil, so you'll also want to keep this in mind later on because it is important. Minister! Khalil! Uh, Hendrix! Can you fight Khalil? Always. We'll grab a weapon from the locker room up ahead and reprogram it to match your biometrics. Sounds like they're finally on to us. Let's move! Taylor, package plus one, secure and inbound. Plus one? Your orders were to extract the minister. His name is Lieutenant Khalil. Sound familiar? So the second interesting moment occurs when you come face to face with Taylor for the first time. He and Hendrix talk about Rachel offhand. You won't recognize the name until later on, but this is Rachel Kane. Also important to note is the fact that Taylor is wearing Kane's bandana around his left elbow at this point. This is the bandana that she leaves in a later mission. 
It's at this moment that I want to bring up the scrolling mission text that appears at the beginning of each level. These are written by Taylor and they're written in the past tense. So the first mission log states this fact, that during surgery your character actually died. So you are most definitely dead. No, I don't think we can dispute that. But in story time, you're not quite dead yet. So for the purposes of this timeline, you know, Taylor's log was written after you die. Okay, let's go back to the mission. So after the end of the rescue mission in Egypt, you get your limbs ripped off, you're unconscious, you're on the operating table. Taylor is running through a simulation with you involving some terrorists. Train go boom. Remember that? Along the way in Taylor's tutorial, you meet his Black Ops team, including Diaz. The first indication that something's going wrong is when you have a panic attack when the robots attack you. You start getting flashes of Taylor being pulled away from your vision by multiple doctors. This is when your procedure starts to go wrong and you begin to die. It's possible that at this point your DNI crashes and you break with Taylor's simulation. Remember, some of Taylor's memories leak into your own when your DNI crashed, so your brain technically would have the memories available to be able to recreate Diaz, Moretti, and Hall in order to continue the simulation as if nothing had gone wrong. It's also possible that you don't actually experience a DNI failure until the end of the tutorial mission. The reason I say this is because if you fast forward a little bit later in the tutorial when you meet Moretti. You're still here, huh? Pity. I bet Diaz a hundred that you'd be dead by now. He mentions that he made a bet with Diaz about whether or not you'd already be dead. So at first glance, this seems like an offhand comment. However, I think that Moretti's comment implies that your actual body is still alive. In the simulation, you know, you just respawn, so there is no dying to speak of. So it's either the real Moretti making this comment about the bet, or it's the Moretti you've created from Taylor's memories. I think it's a little bit ambiguous, but either way, it doesn't really affect the overall reading too much. At any rate, after you blow up the maglev train, you wake up in the operating bed and Taylor says, you're being prepped for surgery now. It's going to be okay. So in this moment, you're definitely already fallen into what I call stage two, your dying dream. So why do I say that? Well, it's because the bandana that you see on the table next to your bed is the bandana that Kane leaves Taylor in a scene towards the end of the game. So this scene is actually Taylor's memory that you've recreated yourself. So if we follow the story as it's presented to us in game, we won't realize the significance of this hospital bed scene until one of the last missions in the game. So for now, you want to bookmark this moment for later on in the video. Let's go back to the scrolling mission text for a second. From here on out, the mission logs you know, those ones written by Taylor, all detail his past missions with the Black Ops team led by Hendrix. Yep, that means Hendrix was once Taylor's CO. I'm going to summarize the logs here, but feel free to look at the video description for a link to the full text. So, Rachel Kane from the CIA is assigned as Taylor's handler for a mission in Singapore. Taylor and Hendrix are assigned to secure a CIA black station being assaulted by the 54 Immortals. When Taylor and Hendrix arrive, they discover the dead bodies and the fact that it appears to be an inside job. The last operatives on site were Stone, Ramirez, Conrad, and Fierro, who were all part of the Black Ops team that Taylor was with. You know, the one that was led by Hendrix and trained by Hendrix. So it turns out that this rogue team is now selling CIA secrets. Does that sound familiar? It should, because it directly mirrors the Singapore mission that you play in the game, except Taylor is the bad guy in your mission. In your dying dream, you've taken on the role of Taylor and assigned Taylor's team as the bad guys. The events of Taylor's missions logs continue to mirror the missions you play, except for the fact 
that at this point, no one actually has DNIs or cybernetically altered limbs. That's something that your brain has made up. That being said, you know, Taylor and Kane do develop romantic feelings, which you experience in your dream. And this explains the seemingly random nature of how Kane and you share weird romantic moments towards the middle and ending of the game. And this same thing occurs no matter if you play as a male or female character. Hendrix's anger is also mentioned in Taylor's mission logs, although in Taylor's mission logs, he's angry because he feels betrayed by his old team that went rogue and by you and Kane's romantic feelings towards each other, which is against the rules and he's against the romance itself. When Taylor and Hendrix go to Egypt to track down Dr. Salim, they meet with Lieutenant Khalil, the same Khalil that you meet in the beginning of Mission 1. Taylor writes that they lost communication with Khalil during the fighting. Of course, we know what happens to Khalil. You know, he was captured, and then we rescue him. Our character rescues him during the first mission of the game. In Taylor's logs, he and Hendrix have a final showdown with Stone. Hendrix ends up killing Stone. In fact, the manner in which you kill Diaz, Hall, and Moretti in your dream also mirror the deaths that Taylor writes about in his log as he's hunting down the rogue team members. Taylor ends his last log by writing about the injuries that he suffered. He was forced to undergo a procedure to receive artificial limbs and a DNI. Afterwards, Hendrix transfers out of the unit and the first mission of the game is actually Hendrix and Taylor's first reunion since taking down Stone. It's also important to note that Hendrix at no point gets a DNI or artificial limbs. After the aftermath of uh, Taylor getting his DNI, Kane also breaks up with Taylor due to disagreements about him joining the Cyber Soldier program. Hendrix, of course, doesn't know about the split until their meeting in the first mission because the two guys have gone their separate ways. So it's at this point that we can revisit Taylor's memory about the procedure to implant his DNI. Let's compare this scene with the scene that we saw earlier on. So in this scene, you're remembering a memory of Taylor, the memory of when Kane broke up with him and gave him her bandana. It's going to change. I don't have a choice. I have to do this. My old life will fade away. This is who I am, Rachel. forget the person that you were. Now, in your dream, you can actually see Kane walking out of the room in this scene. You can also see Sebastian Kruger here. His body is turned, but you can tell it's him by his hair and his face. Hendrix is not actually getting surgery with you. You've hallucinated him there completely and you probably have even hallucinated Kruger. Now, at this point, you're probably wondering how Corvus fits into all of this. Well, Corvus is really just a construction of your imagination. Nothing in Taylor's logs indicate that there was actually a Corvus. The rogue team was eliminated, and although it appears that they did stumble upon illegal DNI experiments that the CIA was conducting, their motives were not compelled by Corvus. They wanted to blow the whistle on the CIA's illegal activity, but then the CIA attempted to eliminate them. The CIA failed, and Taylor and Hendricks were brought in to hunt them down. Taylor's logs actually mentioned that the rogue team thought their actions were justified, and you can argue that they were. They were trying to blow the whistle on some crazy illegal experiments that the CIA was conducting. Now remember, your condition at this point is deteriorating as the missions progress. Corvus can be seen as a sign of 
your brain going haywire or your brain shutting down. As the missions progress, Corvus becomes more and more prevalent and you begin to weave this idea of Corvus more and more into Taylor's memories. Also, remember this important fact. No one, neither Stone's team nor Taylor and Hendrix, actually has DNIs at this point, so there would be no one for Corvus to actually corrupt. In your dream, you've added DNIs to everybody. At this point, we're ready to move on to the third stage, which I'm calling the Frozen Forest. Let's begin with this. The Frozen Forest is not real, I promise. Visually, the decay of your physical state is mirrored by the decay of the world itself. In the very last mission text log, there's a jumble of text in Taylor's previous logs and random words and letters. So I think the big takeaway here is that you're at death's door and you can think of the frozen forest as your journey into the underworld, your acceptance of your own death. I won't walk through every moment here, but I do want to point out some important bits to the overall plot. There's an interesting moment with Moretti in a mirror that hammers home the fact that you've been using Taylor's memories as your own. Let's watch it here. You ever say or do something that you can't explain? Moretti? Is that you? Maybe it wasn't you that said it. You that did it. Maybe it was someone else. Their thoughts bleeding through into your brain. The fuck? Taylor? Are you still with me? Remember, this scene isn't implying that evil Taylor is taking over your body. This is a misconception that I've seen a lot on the internet. Additionally, the ravens that you begin hallucinating are a symbol for your impending death. Ravens are a common symbol for death, and this cannot be ignored. Even the bad guys' bodies explode into ravens when they die during the last level. I also want to point out a few sentences that your character starts repeating to him or herself. Listen only to the sound of my voice. Let your mind relax. Let your thoughts drift. Bad memories fade. Let peace be upon you. Surrender yourself to your dreams. Wash over you like the gentle waves of the bluest ocean. Let them envelop you, comfort you. Imagine someone calm. Imagine someone safe. Imagine yourself in a frozen forest. As the level goes on, your character's words become more frantic and strained. The voice actor here does an amazing job. You're standing in a clearing! around you so tall that they touch the sky. Pure white snowflakes all, all around. You can feel the melt on your skin. You are not cold. You cannot overcome the warmth of your beating heart. Calm! 
In the last scene, you can see your DNI rebooting. Some people interpret this as Corvus stopping you from killing yourself. However, I maintain that Corvus isn't real. Remember, all of the missions from Singapore to killing Taylor happen while your DNI was down. There's a moment where you see Taylor appear and he wrestles Corvus. I think this is the real Taylor forcing his way into your mind for a last ditch effort to save you. This is your last chance! Show me what you're made of! Unfortunately, we know what happens. You aren't able to fight through. It's at this point that you hear Taylor speaking the sentences that your character was repeating earlier in the level. There's a couple ways to interpret this, and my interpretation is that it was always Taylor saying these words. He's physically by your bedside repeating these words to help you get through your dying breaths. Your mind, being the mess that it is, couldn't tell if it was you saying the words or if it was Taylor. In the end, right after your DNI reboots, you answer that you're Taylor. I don't think this means you're literally Taylor. Rather, it's a representation of your memories fading, and thus your character is dead in mind and body. Listen only to the sound of my voice. Let your mind relax. Let your thoughts drift. Let the bad memories fade. Let peace be upon you. You are in control. Imagine yourself. What's your name, soldier? In a frozen forest. I said, what's your name? Taylor. 